Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Bits and Pieces Cricket Podta- Podcast. Sorry about that. Um, with me, with, with us, um, we've got two great guests, and as we would say, it's going to be a very good day for cricket. So please, stay tuned. As with most sports disciplines, women's cricket has often been overshadowed by the men's game. This is a global reality and not something that is by any means exclusive to the world of cricket. But, as has been proven by the likes of Billie Jean King and Serena Williams in the game of tennis, women have made and continue to make great contributions to sports both inside and outside of arenas. As recently as 2016, The West Indies women's team was part of a historical and monumental sweep at the T20 World Cup competition. This week, on the Bits and Pieces Cricket Podcast, we welcome one of the key figures of that triumph, Wendy's captain, Stephanie Taylor. Joining her will be Nadia Gruni, a member of the USA National Women's Cricket Team and the Women's Representative Director on the current USA Cricket Board. The Bits and Pieces Cricket Podcast, hosted by Bear Nancy HD and John Aaron. We're back. This is the Bits and Pieces Cricket Podcast. John, can you do us a favor and introduce our guest, please? Wow, this is a lot of pressure here. Um, these two ladies, and I'm very, very delighted to be joined by these two beautiful ladies who play the sport of cricket um, in their respective areas. They need no introduction. Um, in terms of USA cricket, Nadia Guni has become almost a household name where women's cricket is concerned in the United States. In the area of West Indies cricket and world cricket, Stephanie Taylor has become a legend in her just a younger years. I wouldn't mention a young lady's age, but um, she has certainly become a legend within her own time. Um, so much so that the Jamaican government, I believe in 2017, um, awarded her the Order of Distinction, which is only is the sixth highest order, I believe, of awards for national awards. And I think in the same year herself and Chris Gale. So you right the way you know that she was in pretty good company and she's represented women's cricket tremendously and started playing the game, I believe, from the age of eight. But I'll let her tell you more about herself as we go along. Nadia, the interesting thing about these two ladies, they're both started out liking football, soccer, or as we say in the Caribbean, football, and they branched out to cricket, such is the power of the sport of cricket, I might add, and they both have done exceedingly well in the sport of cricket, even though I suspect they might have done just as well in the sport of football. But I'll let them tell you a bit more about themselves as the evening progresses, about how they made the switch from the big ball to smaller ball. (laughs) <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah, d d definitely. Um, we're anxious, you know, to hear how, how they got started, you know, um, what made them interested in the game of cricket, etc. Um, John, off, off the bat, I want to um, look at something very in interesting, you know, as, as we compare the women's and the men's game, all right? And I will throw this out to you first before I, I, I go to Stefani and um, Nadia. Um, in 1973, uh, the first ever Cricket World Cup was played. And the first ever Cricket World Cup was uh, a, a women's World Cup. Now, when, when we look at history and you know, the, you know, how, how, how things would have evolved, what what does that say to you, John? Well, that the first ever cricket World Cup was, you know, the women's game. Yes, but women were playing cricket um, quite some time before that. Before they had their own women's international association before mm -hmm. they actually merged with the International Cricket Council and became one body. Um, right. it, it says to me that women women have always been treated as the less than equal sex. Um, less than equal sporting partner. But I think over the years, over the last, I would say, 40 years or more, women have come in to their own in the sport. Um, and, and we can go on all night, and I'm going to attest to the fact that the inroads that women's cricket has made into men's cricket. The last World Cup held in England had its largest viewing audience of any kind, and that certainly right. catapulted women's cricket to the forefront into mainstream sports. So much so that women are accepted. A, a typical example of how women's cricket has evolved. You have a women's match going on and the guys are around playing, whether they're playing dominoes or something going on. When the likes of a Stefani Taylor gets on the field, all eyes turn to her because they now they're seeing a woman competing at the same level as a man. And in, by way of the introduction, when I said that she was in good company being recognized by the government of Jamaica in the mm -hmm. same year with Chris Gale, that right. tells you the kind of stature and the, how far women's cricket has actually um, come. Nadia Guni has been, I think, the only the second female cricket in the United States to score a century. And Nadia will tell you how long she started playing the game, maybe a little over a dozen years ago, if less, uh, probably less. And that's how far it has come so much so that they are making strides, not only in the sport of cricket, but throughout the world, as we have seen, um, women are making strides. And so the, the game of cricket for women has certainly come a long way since 1973. Okay. Stefani, in an interview, um, you said that you were introduced to the game of cricket at the age of eight. Um, when you, you, you know, um, you know, typically a West Indian would say, I started playing, you know, I started playing cricket, you know, at whenever. All right. When you say introduce, um, in your, in your part of Jamaica, um, uh, cricket, what was it? Wasn't it a popular game? You know, wasn't it something that, you know, that, that, you know, the kids played a lot of? Um, when I was at primary school, I guess they, it was popular, but I just didn't know it, um, okay. because I was so into football and I was so into netball, so I didn't mm. know anything about cricket whatsoever until my trainer at the time, I saw him with a, at, at the time I said it was a board because I didn't know anything about cricket, so I saw him with a board, but then later I knew that it was a bat. So he said to me that, you know, it's a bat and um, it's poor day and it's cricket. So he said to me, if I want to try it, um, I know back then when, you know, people want to get into the feel of things, they usually tie, you know, a ball in a sock. So that's how I actually started. So he he saw that I was hitting the, 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 the ball in the sock. And I was like, oh, you're natural if I wanted to try it. So I said, right. okay, um, I didn't think anything of it, to be honest. I just thought, that, okay, then it's just one more um, sport that I, I, 
I have to play really. Um, so it's a matter of how am I going to do this because it's not three sports. So it's right. netball, football, and cricket. So it, the good thing was that they never collided. So there was no confusion whether I, right, you know, I have netball and cricket today. So which one am I going to choose? So they make sure that when they do the fixture, that you could play netball, you could play football, and you could play cricket. So I, you know, I get to do all three sports. Right, right, okay. Now that you you uh, started watching to be, uh, cricket in your home country, which is Trinidad and Tobago, right? Um, how how did you get started then? Um, well, I mean, just as almost every other kid back home in the Caribbean, I got started um, with my, my brothers and neighbors. Um, we played cricket in the streets. We played cricket in the yard, uh, wherever we could play, whenever cricket was in season. Um, but it never really went beyond that because for me, I didn't see a lot of women playing cricket. Um, actually, one time I went to a game with my brothers and and there were a couple of older women playing on the side and, and they had me just um, hit the ball a little bit and they, they they were a little bit surprised. I can't remember what age I was, maybe, I don't know, maybe around maybe nine or 10, I'm just guessing. Uh -huh. um, and they asked if I wanted to to join their club. And at the time I said like, no, no, no way. I mean, cause they were talking about hard ball cricket. And for me, okay. that was just, just like, I'm, you know, I'm so small. I'm small as it is right now. So just imagine back then. Um, so I never really considered it. I didn't see too much, uh, you know, women playing cricket around anywhere at that time. Um, and then there was that huge gap between then and, and then many years, years later um, after college and starting to, to work here um, in California, in the U.S., in California. And um, and then I picked it up again at that point, and that's where I really started to to take cricket seriously. Okay. Um, Stefani, now you would have been introduced to the game. You said at eight. At at what point did you did you get serious? At at at, at what point did you say, okay, um, I'm gonna put aside netball and football, and I'm gonna focus primarily on um, I'm not even sure if at that time I was actually serious when I decided, um, but it was probably, in, I was in my teens at the time, and my same, you know, trainer said to me, um, you have a West Indies women's team, and they, they travel a lot, and I was like, oh, wow, traveling? Yeah, I want to do that. So I think okay. it was more, I think it was more having at the time more than seriousness. I didn't know um I didn't know if at that point if I was even serious. Um, right. but I do know that at that point I wanted to travel. So yeah, I just went with that. Um I know that it would have given me the opportunity to travel. So I just went on and yeah that's what I think at that time that's why I chose Okay. Well, when, chose. when you when you Pause. You, you, you know, um, you say you, didn't, you weren't familiar with this game. But when you took a step back and you looked wrong, was there anyone else in your family that, you know, may have, be, may have played back in the day and um, were talented? Um, I think one of, well, my, my big brother, um, he played, but it was more like for fun. And he was a mm -hmm. pace bowler. I heard that he's good. I've never really seen him in action. I know that he just used to play for fun. It was nothing serious. But my dad, my dad and my uncle, they're both um, fanatics. They love cricket. So, right. uh, but they never, they, 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 they didn't play back in the day. No. Okay. Okay, Nadia. Yeah. Um, now you you would have come to Georgia and you would have um, started um, as an administrator. Um, how 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 did that happen? <laughs> I 
Um, let's see. I I just finished college at that time, and mm. um, I through some friends I got connected to a club in Georgia, a men's club, and um, again, you know, it was just a bunch of men playing, so there was no thought given to to playing the sport. Um, but I always liked cricket, and I I, okay. I was interested in what they were doing, and I wanted to help in any way that I can. So I just uh, started supporting the club um, with their events and their fundraising events, and then that extended to the league as well. Um, you know, it's just something that I always took an interest in to just to just help um, where I can. And uh, so that's that's just how it started um, back then. Okay. I want to talk to you two ladies about the changes that you would have seen in the game of cricket, in, in the game of women's cricket, um, since you got started. But before we go there, um, John, is there anything you, you, you wanted to ask with regard to the, the foundation? Well, I know that Stefani Taylor took over from Melissa Aguilera, I believe, in 2015 it was. 15 or 16 as the captain of the West Indies team. And since then, she has been dubbed the one of the most successful captains of West Indies women's cricket. What I wanted to ask Stefani was, what does she attribute to her success and her consistency as a women's cricketer and more so as captain of the West Indies team? Um... I actually did not know that, you know, I was one of the most successful captains, to be honest. Those are things that I don't even uh, think about. I just, you know, I'm in the leadership role. Um, I tried my very best to fulfill that. Um, I'm not really, when I'm, when I'm on the field, I'm not one of those active kind of um, captain. I'm more of a leader. Who, who do things through action. So, um, I mean, when I have to talk or if I have anything to say to the girls, I will. But I think the difference with Mar Marissa and I is that um, Marissa will talk more. So Marissa is more vocal. I'm not sure if maybe because she's a, you know, she's a wicked keeper and, you know, wicked keeper have to be a bit chatty. But I think Marissa was more chatty than and I think I'm more relaxed and um, try to think. And if anything, I try to, you know, say to um, the players. But <clears throat> also make sure that, you know, I give whoever what I when I'm on the field, um, the ball the opportunity to um, to execute. So it's not too confusing. Um, but yeah, I think I'm I'm more of a, a relaxed kind of um, a leader, but when 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 I have to say something, I'll say. Um, and Nancy, the, the similar question to Nadia, who has also captained the U.S. team, and the question I wanted to ask Nadia was, um, since she has been a captain of the U.S. women's team, from then to now, where she is the female player representative on the U.S. Cricket Board. What changes has she seen taking place and what does she see happening in the near future for women's cricket in the U.S. and her role in that future? Nadia? Sorry, John. Did you, did you I hear the question? missed you a bit there in the question. Oh. Okay, I'm, I'm saying you have also had the, the honor of captaining the USA women's national team, not unlike Stefania captain of the West Indies team. And you would have seen some changes from then as captain to now as a player and a player representative on the US cricket board. What changes have you seen taking place from the days when you captain, which is not so long ago, to now? And what changes do you see coming about in the very near future for women's cricket in the US? So, um, okay, in terms of changes, are you talking about on the field or off the field? On the field and off the field. Well, mostly off the field, because on the field, 
you know, women are continuing to play, but off the field. I'm sorry, it's difficult to hear you with the static. Whoa. Um, let, let me let me shorten the question. What changes have you seen since you've been captain of the USA women's team? No, I just now? think at the last part. I heard, I heard most of it just the last. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What changes do you see coming about in the very near future for women's cricket in the US? Okay, I think I heard I'll put the pieces. If, if, I, if there's something I missed, let me know. Um, changes that have happened over the, the years. Um, it's been really slow going in, in the US, um, as you know, uh, for several reasons. There was a period of about four years um, where there was no ICC competition for teams in this region. Um, so our cricket was at a bit of a standstill um, from a national point of view. But during that time, you know, we've had some youngsters get into the game. So they've seen us, back, you know, back in those early years of 2011, 2012, um, there were youngsters in the age group of about eight, nine, who were looking on and, and, and between them and their parents, they can see that um, there, is, there is going to be a future for women's cricket in the U.S. Um, so they started to get involved. And um, so all of those, you know, over the years, they've been, They've been um, training, they've been playing club cricket locally, et cetera, while things were quiet in the national scene. So what we have... Is she frozen? I, I, I think we're having some, uh, some connection problems um, from Nadia's end. We will take uh, a short break and um, we'll be back. Um, we are we are back. I, I don't know where um, our guests. Okay, hi Stephanie. Nadia, um, Nadia, Nadia, may, maybe Nadia, Nadia will be back shortly. All right, let's 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 get into some cricket. Um, let's chat some. You know, the, let, let's I'm go on. Say that again. She says she's not hearing you. Um. Okay, my mic is on. Are are you hearing me, um, John? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, check. Um, you hearing me now, Stephanie? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry about that. Yeah. Let let let's 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 look at some cricket. Let's let's go on to the field. Let's talk a little strategy here. Now we're gonna go back to the year 2016, um, the year of a major triumph for you know West Indies team. We we sweeped the T20 um, World Cup. Now, Stefani, it's your first game. It's Pakistan. Um, it's a close game, you know, 
you the West Indies team gets by by four runs. Do you what are you thinking after that Pakistan match? Do 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 you see yourself and your team going all the all the way to the end? Can can you recall what was going through your head after that Pakistan match? To be honest, like I have no recollection of even that game. <laughs> I'm here thinking, I was like, oh, we, we almost lost that game. Like, I have no recollection of that game. But I do remember what um, actually helped us or helped me. And I spoke about, um, I, I've, I've said his name a lot when I'm, you know, doing interviews, um, especially about the work of was Robin Singh. Um, because the time that he, you know, he would just come to the hotel or even call me on the phone, he called me like every single day while I was here, every single day. And he would message to say, um, you know, are you free? When can we talk? And I would say, all right, then I'm free now or free in like a, a half an hour. And he would call. If he called, he would be on the phone for like hours. If we would meet up, we would sit at breakfast or dinner, and we would talk for hours about cricket. But he would just give me some ideas like on where we're playing next. So after every game, we will have this kind of discussion. And he will tell me, if you do back for 14 or 15 overs, Bustinis will win. And that's all I was actually thinking of. Every time I go out there, he said, don't worry about anybody. You just bat 40 overs or 15 overs, and you guys will win. And that's all I think about. That's all. <laughs> we will think about that advice, John. I, I think it's the, it shows the power of focusing. And it's something that's lacking in among a lot of players these days in the current match. They get caught up in I'm the moment. Hearing, John. A lot of players get caught up in the moment and they don't have a singular focus. So you guys are hearing me? Nadia, I, I can me? hear you, John. I'm hearing uh, you. Man, you see, maybe a bad connection to Jamaica. That's why Stefan, you can't hear me. Stefan, you hear me now? Okay, I, I will go ahead and answer the question, then we can come back and see if Stefan can rejoin us. A lot of players get caught up in the moment, even though they may not have the situational awareness. So what Stephanie is attributing to her success and the success of the team was that singular focus of being able to stay there and bat for 14 or 15 overs. And if you stay there that long, you've got to begin to see the ball a little bigger and be able to pick out the bad ones from the good ones. So I think that's very good advice for any player is to be focused on the task at hand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I know Stephanie can't hear, but if I can add to, to what she was saying and what you're saying, John, um, what what Robin, you know, likes to say, especially in the T20 format, is that you have you have more time than you think that you have, right? So for someone like Stephanie who comes in um, one down, or maybe sometimes she opened, but I think she was coming in um, coming one down. Um, the message is you have the time. Right, it may seem like a short game, but it's it's not. If you stay there, you do, you know, you make the runs. You have the ability. Once you're in, you can you know complete and and, and just pick it up another gear. Stephanie, okay. because Stephanie, most, of, most of my action. time, most of the time, if you watch, mm -hmm. yeah, I was um, not every, not clearly, but like um, in and out. You got the gist of it. All right. Okay, you could go ahead and make it call. Yeah. No, I was just replying to what Nadia said. Um, reason for that is because most times how I play, especially in T20, is that I start to be slow, but I always catch up. Um, so when I finish, I will finish like my strike rate is normally be over 100. So it simply means that I can catch up. So, I can hear you. Not to say that I soak up that balls, but I do rotate this strike, but not to think about uh, mm -hmm. just bang, 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 like, you know, DeAndre Nottingham, who is more of an aggressive player than I am, because I could always catch him. So 
don't think too much on, you know, you have to go hard um, in the first, first time because you can always catch up. Okay, okay. Um, Stephanie, who, who did you, you know, after, after you would have um, been given the captaincy, was there any cricketer, male or female, that you looked up to, that you studied, that, you know, you, that you followed, that was an inspiration to you? No, I, I didn't study anyone, to be honest. I just, I just watch cricket. Um, I love watching cricket, but I, yeah, I don't think I really study um, people, to be honest, like that. I, I, I just like to do um, my, my own. Do your thing, huh? Do your own thing, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. see, Nad Nadia has been Stefania Stefani has been awarded the West Indies players, I believe, player recognition yeah. for about yeah, ten yeah. times, if not right. if not more. Nadia, on the other hand, has been awarded the New Inning Foundation Player of the Year Award in the three, same category for three, I think it's three successive times. So the question that comes to mind is that both of these players have been recognized within their own domains, so to speak. Clearly, Stefani is playing at a higher level, playing more frequently than Nadia would be playing. But nonetheless, if you put the two things together, both women have had the kind of exposure to international cricket and have responded in a very positive manner. The question, I, I know Nadia has been quoted as saying that she is a cricket enthusiast, and an ad, well, there she goes, <laughs> and ad, an advocate for the sport. And my question to her would have been, um, what positive, oh, here you go, Nadia. I thought you're running from my question. Um, you, you have been she, 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 She's to, going over the boundary line time and again. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you're leaning back to make that catch. Um, you have been referred to as being an advocate for women's cricket, for cricket enthusiasts and stuff as a USA player and that you have um, using sport and advocating for positive changes. I wonder what positive change cricket has had in your life? And I would ask the same question of Stefani, but to you first, Nadia. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming, of course, cricket has had a positive change in your life. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> being, um, you know, someone who comes from another country, migrates to another country, and you know, start a life, it's always difficult to migrate. It's extremely difficult, as, as you guys would know. Um, so I think one of the first things that Cricket has done is to be able to provide a community um, of, of like-minded people, people with similar interests, and from, uh, people who share the same culture and um, commonalities of, of your country. Um, so that was, you know, the first thing to be able to build those friendships and relationships over the past decade or so. Um, <clears throat> other other changes uh, or positive effects, I would say, um, it, it relates to my history of playing sports in general, whether it was cricket or soccer or, or even tennis, um, and that is being able to to champion. Uh, efforts for, for more ladies to play the sport and to, to get more opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. I remember when I played sports at an early age, especially soccer, um, we were still considered sort of like the pioneering group back home to Tobago. And so there are so many challenges that come with it, right? You don't get the gears that, that you could, the clothes, you get the, the hand downs from the guys, which was big. Um, you don't get the, the same feels that they get, you, you know, so many things you do not get. But at the same time, there are people, um, always a, a few people, less than a handful, who would really support and champion efforts in, of women's sports. And so for me, that has stuck with me. And, and so um, moving through this cricket journey, I've picked it up, you know, seriously. 
um, at a much older age in, in my 20s. Um, so, you know, I've already been, been so late to, to join the party. But um, that experience for me has helped me to also want to do the same for young girls and for the campaign new efforts and, and create opportunities for them. Um, so, and, you know, it's to be able to do something good for others. Uh, I mean, that's that's the whole idea of sport, right? To, to effect that positive change. And, and you don't know what are the good things you could be doing for that right for those opportunities besides just being direct um, the part of sport. Yeah, so, so cricket can have a positive change socially, culturally, and stuff. Uh, Stefani, you come from a small village in, in um, St. Catherine, in the parish of St. Catherine, right? Um, in uh, Spanish tongue, in St. Catherine. Since your meteoric rise in women's cricket and women's sport in general, have you seen your rise having an effect on your community, a positive effect on your community and girls in particular? Okay, um, did, did you hear John's question, Stefani? No, I'm not hearing John any of that. Okay, um, you hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Fine. Okay, um, John was asking, um, you see, you, you grew up in the parish uh, of St. Patrick. St. Catherine, right? yeah. St. Catherine. Oh. And, um, yes. yeah, he, he wanted to know um, if your rise would have, influenced you know the, the people of your your community or how most, how, most, of, most of the girls yeah especially especially the, the girls um i think um i had quite a, a few influences um or influence a few um i remember i played with the boys at uh, from primary level and then at high school you know, there was this big controversy about, you know, me playing um, at a higher level because, you know, the danger. And I remember they actually, they came to my game and they watched me play. And they were like, oh, you know, she could play. So they allowed me to play. Um, but I remember Rashida Williams, um, you know, she went to the same high school, um, Elder High, and she, it was different for her. So she played at, she played at like under 14, under 16, but she, I don't think she was allowed to play beyond that because they did it too dangerous for her. So when there were talks, they were like, oh, because she's not as good as you, so I, they didn't allow her um, to play. And yeah, you have like, you know, Roshana um, Otar played at um, for St. Catherine, um, St. Catherine High School. And you have Chinel Henry, who's now playing for West Indies, um, played for her high school as well. And you also have, um, I think, Natasha McLean, who I believe played with the boys at some stage um, when she was going to high school. Terrific. Okay, that that that, that answers the question, uh, John. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Great. Nadia, you had uh, indicated that uh, Stefani and Brian Lara were your cricketing heroes. All right, and you know, Stefani mm -hmm. is right there next to you. No, I can't. So, I great people. so um, we're gonna take a brief break, and I, 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 you know, I want you to tell me, you know, what about these two cricketers? Um, you know, would would have, you know, drawn you to them? All right, we'll take a break. <laughs>
Yes, Nadia. Um, your cricketing heroes, Lara and Stefani, right next to us there. Um, what, what about these two players would have inspired you? Well, first of all, um, Brian Lara was at his prime, I guess, at my very impressionable age. I um, can't remember what that age was, but we could, we could always do the math and figure it out. Maybe John could do that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but Brian Lara, of course, was at his peak during my, my impressionable years. And um, just how do you even not like Brian right? It's just, it's hard to even think about any other, any other person um, at that point in time. Um, you know, and then I would say after that, I did not watch cricket for a very long time, uh, especially when I moved to the U.S. and went to college. Um, and so I just never really had a favorite player until until Stephanie came on the scene. And, uh, you know, there was just, I, I just couldn't, there was no one else can match to Brian Arrow, but Stephanie too, in my mind, right? And then, of course, to see a female being so dominant and being um, so confident and intelligent about the way she goes about the game, especially as a, as a captain and a leader. And, Stephanie and I have been friends for a number of years now, um, maybe about a decade or so. Or like a um, and so I've gotten to know her personally as well, and, and the sort of person that she is. And you know, there's just so many good things about Stephanie that you know, makes me, you know, even when I played a lot more cricket, um, I'd call on her for advice. You know, Steph, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you think about the game? Uh, we're going to play this. And she'd always give me great advice, always open. Um, whether or not I could implement these things was another matter, but um, she was always there. Always so um, I love the technique for me. I'm, I'm also someone who loves the, loves the, the, the classy battles. And so. Uh, I could go on and on, but I'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, I, I get you. I get you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. Um, she will um, always Stephanie. ask for advice under disguise. Under disguise? <laughs> that's, not that, that's an interesting comment. <laughs> <laughs> Advice on the disguise. On the disguise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, St Stefani, in 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 the you know the years that you've been playing, um, would you have noticed uh, an increase, you know, of support in terms of? The crowds and so on for women's cricket uh, has it been noticeable oh yes um i think even a blind person would notice that um i remember when i started playing um from what from when i was like 17 when i toured um, europe you probably had one or two persons in the in in, in the stands and now i i believe i've played um of probably like 70 something thousand that's like unbelievable um, so yes the game has grown um over how many years now and i think um it's gonna even get better okay and what has been your experience with fans you know um would you say that there there are a few you know like like okay like last week we had a super fan you know someone who 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 follows West Indies, um, at least the, 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 the male players, you know, around. Um, have you encountered um, such fans for the women's game? Um, I see not, Peter not Matthews in, used in, to. Yeah. Peter Matthews. <laughs> uh, when she don't have work. 
um, I don't think Tom Matthews used to follow us around, but um, not sure where he is uh, where he is now. Okay, okay. Um, we have a question from uh, for Stephanie from one of our viewers. <laughs> and the person wants to know how the preparations are progressing for the World Cup qualifiers in December in Sri Lanka. Um, oh, that's actually a good question. <laughs> um, how can I answer this one now? Um, you know, the pandemic has played a big role in, um, in us playing in cricket. So it's kind of hard and, uh, you know, with the restrictions and stuff like that, it makes it even harder. So I think um, West Indies is in a position where we might have a camp coming up soon. And I'm hoping that we do get some tours um, before that. I'm hearing that we, 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 we might get some tours. So fingers crossed that they do come. Okay, okay, good. Nadio, what has it been like for the women's game in in the USA? Have you seen, you know, you know, the, the support for the game, both from the fans, um, administrators, etc. Um, has it risen to the point where, you know, you could say, okay, it's satisfactory? Oh, certainly not. Um, certainly not. I mean, we're still... The, the pool of players, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's really small at the moment. Um, but, you know, it's going to take, it's going to take a, a really big and collective effort for, to increase the numbers across all aspects of it. Um, and that's something that we, we want to work on, that we are working on um, to, to implement and, and to put in place so that we can see that will happen over the next few years. Um, but notwithstanding, we do have very passionate individuals and puppets and people in puppets around the country. Um, Don being one of them, and he's been one of the biggest supporters of the most cricket in the US. Um, so, you know, although we don't have those numbers yet, it's still important to, um, to, to, to like John and others to really step up and most support and on that core of the world, and the first half 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 of um, John, um, from your experience, um, from your experience, um, would you say that both the women's and men's game in the USA um, do do they both suffer from in in, in terms of having enough um, crowd support? Um, it, it, that is hard to say because well, the women's game in particular suffers from not having as much fans on the boundary line more so than the men the men tend to be a more of a a groupy thing if you got a friend playing cricket you may shop to support him but that doesn't necessarily mean that 10 people who are not connected to that guy will shop to play the sport in the women's game is mostly a, a husband or a boyfriend or a father or a mother who's likely to come up and support that individual player so you wouldn't have an aunt who has no interest showing up at the ground. So they, they suffer in different ways. The men obviously have a lot more um, players coming out to support them because they've been around for a longer time. But the women's game is slowly and surely taking hold. And it, it will take some time. Um, but no, they, they, they don't get far as much support, both men and women at the ground. Sometimes you've got the largest crowd I've seen for men's game was when the West Indies team, it was the West Indies team that came here in 2006. 
Um, they weren't, they didn't come under the auspices of the West Indies Cricket Board. So they all had a piece of duct tape on the West Indies Cricket cricket logo on their helmet. But you had Gail, Chandra Paul, Lara. They had the whole West Indies team and then some, Star One. And that brought out a number of fans. Now that was a paid event. And they were selling tickets in advance through Ticketron. Well, you know, some West Indians, we don't buy tickets in advance for anything, not even Mother's Day Festival. And we wait until we look outside and say, boy, it looked like in the rain, I ain't going cricket. And so, and at the same time, they didn't believe Brian Lara would have been there. Nadia was missing, I think she was there, but Brian Lara was there. And, um, <laughs> and people waited until their friends were in the ground and on the cell phone saying, yes, Brian Lara is here, Chris Gale is here. And then they bum rushed the gate. But the federal authorities who control the park saying you couldn't sell tickets at the at the game. And that was the largest crowd I've seen for men's games here. Yes, you've got the odd finals and semi-final match that brings out two, three hundred people, but you don't get the crowd that I believe you're deserving, more so the women. But that hopefully with time will change, you know. Okay. All right. Um, we're gonna get to our closing question. Um, shortly, but before that, John, I'll give you uh, an opportunity to um, ask ask another question or two, and we'll do that after this break. John, over to you. Yeah. Stefani, um, your, your stats are awesome. Simply awesome. Um, from any perspective of the game, men or women, I don't care. Your, your stats are, are up there. And but since breaking into the West Indies team and making your debut away, I believe you scored 90 off of 48 or 49 balls. That was an outstanding achievement because you had just um, gotten into the team. It was your debut match and you scored almost 100. I'm inclined to ask you what happened to the 10 runs, but we won't go there. But you had at least 90. Um, you've gone on from there to be named Weeper Player of the Year, I think, about 10 times. You've gone on to play in the, the um, T20 tournaments around the world, in Australia and so on. You've been awarded the OD. Um, you've been captain the West Indies to a World Cup. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But well, what would you say is your singular accomplishment that, in your opinion, was your most rewarding accomplishment in the sport of cricket? I think Anansi has to translate. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> um, did, you didn't get any of that, um, Stefani? She's hearing you, but not me. No, she's. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm not hearing um, John any at all. You're not, you're not hearing John at all. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, John was highlighting, you know, um, your, your career. And um, he was saying that, you know, when, when you look across the game, whether it's male or female players, that your stats stand high, you know, um, well, one has got to give it a lot of respect. And he was asking, when you look back, what do you see as your one 
crowning moment? What 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 would you say? You know, is is is, is you know that 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 when you look when you look at the look at the circumstance, look at the situation, you can say, okay, um, in terms of achievement, that was my biggest achievement. I would definitely say the World Cup um, I made. Mean, I was I was a young captain. Um, I was a young leader, and um, not knowing anything about um, you know being a captain, and to even try to separate, like you know, when I when I go there to bat, just to. Separate. Go there when I'm feeling just concentrate on the feeling. Um, it was it was challenging, um, but I think I had a great moment. Okay, uh, that that was clear, John. Yeah, I suspected that would have been her answer because um, it's got to be the pinnacle of anyone's career to win a World Cup. Um, to to Nadia, my question to Nadia is. Obviously, you've been playing cr cricket now for a little while, probably not as long as Stefania has, and certainly not within the environment that Stefania has been playing cricket. But lessons learned from the sport of cricket, how have you transferred those lessons learned from cricket into your personal or professional life? Um, there are so many lessons that you, you don't remember all at once um i mean definitely resilience is one of them resilience um, yeah resilience um i mean I, I probably shouldn't even talk about these stats i wouldn't but uh, my my tour of, of bangladesh back in 2011 i think that's where i met steph right steph thank you um Bangladesh. Yes. 2011. Yeah, 2011, and um, it was my first, my first tour, my first tournament. Um, really didn't play a lot of, of games before that, and I had such a terrible, terrible outing. And um, I remember leaving that tournament and with this feeling of just wanting to quit the game totally, um, but. For some reason, I, I don't know, I got over that feeling. I stuck with it. I resolved to, to train harder, to get get into some fitness, etc. And, and then um, things got better from there. And so, I mean, those things apply, of course, to life, whether it's in work or anything at all. You, you encounter failures. And um, as bad as it may feel in the moment, you just know that you, you have to pick up from there and, and continue. So. Um, I think that's something you learn, whether it's cricket or course, sports in general. If you talk to kids or people who are athletes, I think that's one of the one of the biggest lessons that that we learn and that we take forward in in, in life um, to be able to bounce back after failure and to deal with challenges. Thank you. Okay. All right. The closing question um, for each of you. Uh, it's it, it's uh, two part. I'll start with you, Stefani. The three, the three formats of the game, the T20, the one day, I, I, I know that the women's team hasn't played much in terms of test cricket. But one, which is your um, preferred preference? Would you, would you like to see more test cricket um, being played by um, the women's team? And what can the powers of that we do at this time to, you know, instill a love of the game in the younger Caribbean um, women? Um, so one, um, we, we, we haven't played any test cricket. And I believe that test cricket. I would I would love to play test cricket. To be honest, I've, um, I remember when um, I think it was Clyde Bucks and um, Clive Lloyd. Um, they 
you know, selectors. I remember writing this long email, you know, saying that how how badly I want to play test cricket. And he said to me, really? And I said, yeah, I, I really want to play test cricket. I really want to give it a go. And, you know, he was just, you know, we were back and forth where he was asking, like, you know, what they could do. And I was like, you know, it even started out by just playing like a two-day cricket, you know, just like that. Get us into practice. We don't have to start by playing a whole four because even test women's test cricket, right? England and Australia. Don't they play five, five days. I think it's four days or three days. I don't remember. Um, but you could just start by doing that, you know. And I, I think it would help you um, with, you know, 50 over format of the game. You know, um, if you get your mind um, to, to bat that long, um, you could definitely bat for 50, you know, 50 overs easily. If you could bat a whole day, simply means that you could bat 50 overs like just like that. So that's where I wanted to get my mind when I said you know, I wanted to play this cricket. Um, but they just didn't think that we were ready to play. But I was like, how can you, if, if, if we don't practice, then how are we going to get there? We have to start somewhere, and that has to start by practicing. I'm sure England just didn't get up and say, oh, you know, they're going to play this cricket. They didn't practice. Yeah, so, right, um, right. So they get better. That's what you know I wanted um, for us. We you know practice, but it's not just playing test cricket um, for even a long period, but just to get us in the habit of batting long or you know a fifty overs, um, you know, get us better as a team and as players. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear the, um, the part two. The part. <laughs> no, I, I was asking you, what what do you think um, that the authorities, the cricketing authorities around the region, what can they do to instill a love for the game among young women and for those young women who are interested in the game, you know, how, how can they best help them, you know, based on your own experience? Um, you know, when, when you, when you look back at like kitty cricket, um, you know, grassroots, you know, we need to get somewhere, you know, we need to get some of that for the, for, for females. Um, you have a lot of the females, you have, a, you have some young players or young girls who are interested, but because you don't have that, the assisting, um, they they probably integrate with the boys and then afterwards just don't hear anything you know hear anything more about them so if you could get that where you have grassroots for for females um for for males you get it for the women as well and even in the school trying to introduce it in the school that's what okay. i've been you know i tried to do that while i was playing uh while i was at some high team going but it just never happened okay, okay. Uh, the questions to you um that did the same in terms of you know which is your preferred format would you like to see more uh, test would I actually like to see test cricket being played by the usa women's um cricketers and how do you think we can better promote the game amongst young women um, I'd say my preferred format would be the cooking format. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count myself as a, a stronger of the players um, in the T20 format. So I, I like the cooking of this cook. Took my time. I think I can, I think I have the ability to stay a little bit long on, on the wicket. Um, in terms of <clears throat> seeing women play test cricket, I think, I mean, definitely. It, you know why not it's a format of the game but i know there's already so much it's it's already such a, an uphill task to to get the powers that be to to just get enough cricket any type of cricket at the moment right whether it's 20 or, yeah. or anything um so 
it's something that we could build towards. And as Steph said, yeah, I, I really could start with a TV uh, format of the game. Um, you know, and, and we could gradually go to that point of a, of a test match. Um, test match. Um, what can the, the powers that we do to install? Um, again, a lot like what Steph said, I think it's just important to get younger girls involved with the sport and, and to just have fun, to create, you know, very fun opportunities for them. And, and it starts in the schools. Um, those are the memories and the things that they'll, they'll remember as they grow up. Those, you know, just really good times that they would have had with their friends and their schoolmates playing school cricket. And if they're able to play competitions, then, you know, they, that's something else that they can hold on to. So, um, if they're able to, to target the girls um, specifically at, at a younger age, then you'll see a different uh, crop of girls growing into the sport um, as it's inculcated into themselves, um, you know, as they go through school. So. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you both for agreeing to grace us with your presence, um, your knowledge, um, your thoughts. Um, thank you, Stephanie. Um, and, you know, I wish you both best of luck um, moving forward um, in, you know, in, 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 with your different teams and so on. All right. Um, John, you could extend your thanks and then we'll close up. Um, Nancy, I have a challenge for Stephanie. For Ste Stephanie. Um, you let, let me check one thing. Are, are you hearing him yet, um, Stefani? Are you hearing John yet? I'm not hearing. No? I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't think that actually likes me, to be honest. No, that, that, you know that's not true. That's not true. Um, I don't know why you're not hearing me. Yeah, that, this is true. I'm, anyway, let, let, me, let me do the question, and then I can have my interpreter, try, my translator. <laughs> Stefani, the question is, that you have been such a phenomenal force in women's cricket. I mean, you were the first person, I believe, to um, be a ranked number one in both men and women in terms of batting and bowling, right? Uh, and a number of accolades, we can go on all night long enumerating them. But my challenge to you is, as a further inspiration to younger girls, that you should start writing a book. You should write a book. Even if it's a small book, intended for middle school students, mm. just documenting your pathway, your adventure to where you are right now. I think that's my challenge to you. Translator, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Stefani, um, John is putting out a challenge. Um, given your accomplishments, given um, you were listed as number one batting bowling, um, He's suggesting that you should write a book, right? Maybe face. direct it to the younger girl. But he feels you, you, you should sit down and write. So, well, he didn't say this part, but um, he doesn't mind helping with the editing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 it, it I'm, I'm actually I'm thinking about writing a book. There I'm you go. Actually, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, do 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 keep us abreast with that. You know, it it, it should be a very interesting read. Um, I I I, I know Nadia might get to write the introduction, but uh, <laughs> the foreword. <laughs> she probably, she probably want to um, write half of the. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I know so much of your journey. I don't know. It <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. would be interesting to know if Nadi wants to write the first half or the last half. The last half, right? <laughs> Somehow, the other, I believe the last half would be more interesting, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it, it, you know, um, yeah, we were really um, happy to have you both. Um, we would like to welcome you. Um, again, some sometime in the future. Um, hopefully, the audio next time will be much better. 
because we, we, we know, you know, with the, with the audio problems, you know, with John not being able to speak directly to Stefani, et cetera, you know, we had some issues, but thank you so much. Um, John, you want to close up? No, I, I want to echo your thoughts as well and to thank both ladies. Tonight, obviously, was ladies' night, and um, so we don't want to hear any complaints from the men or the women that we don't bring on any ladies. I think we had two fantastic guests tonight in Nadia and Stefani, and I think they both brought so many, two different perspectives to the sport, one on the U.S. level and one on the international level, but still a Caribbean flavor. Stefani from Jamaica, Nadia from the island of Tobago, from Trinidad and Tobago. And I think it's interesting to see the perspectives of the two women, how they arrived at where they are right now. And in so many ways, they have so much in common in the pathway that it took to get to cricket. I think it's awfully inspiring to younger girls who might be watching this show that says, I can be a Stefani Taylor, I can be a Nadia Grooney. And I think they both have got so much to give and so much more to give. And um, I just wish them well, and I hope that they continue to be an inspiration, not only to younger girls, but sports people in general. Right? Nadia talked about resiliency. Um, Stefani talked about focusing. And those are two integral and clearly very valuable components to being a top-notch athlete. You have to be resilient. You have to learn how to lose. And you have to be focused on what you're doing. And I want to thank both ladies for bringing out those two points very, very clearly in a very articulate manner. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Okay, um, Stefani, I must echo John's thank you. He gave a big thank you, so I must echo that because I know you're not here. So thank you so much, and we hope to see you again sometime. And to our viewers, thank you for Thanks staying for with us. Right, it was a pleasure having been with you all this evening. Take care now. Good night, we'll ladies. Back next week, um, should, should we say who we we gonna have next week, um, John? Or no, we should keep it as a surprise for now. Keep it as a surprise. All right. Two very interesting guests. <laughs> yeah, we have two very interesting <laughs> guests lined up for next week. So do do join us next Wednesday at some thirty. Eastern Standard Time for bits and pieces. Okay, bye for now. Good night. Bye bye. <laughs>